Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the tutorial on building an API using Java. Now, be warned, this is part of an API series I'm doing, so go ahead and go to the website below this. You can get to this webpage that I'm on right now if you click the link below this video. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button. But this is part of an API series, as I said. So we already went over what an API is, and we actually planned for this specific API. And just to catch up, if you don't know, and you don't want to watch the video for this, we have an API that is going to be for a fruit warehouse. So certain fruits come in, we need to add those fruits to the database. We need to add 50 apples to the database. Certain fruits come out because we sell them to the store. We need to subtract those fruits from the database. And we also need to be able to check how many fruits we have in the warehouse at a given time. So we need three API functions just for managing a database if we're pretending we're like a fruit warehouse. So we already know like a lot of the java that goes behind this i've done a java series and it goes over maven spring and heroku which we're going to be using so if you don't know what any of that is really just go ahead and catch up because it really makes a difference because i spent a lot of time on these videos just so you would understand how these things work so Go ahead and catch up. Click the link below this video. You'll get all these links. It'll be really good. You'll be up to speed with everyone else. If only schools did this for kids who learn at different rates. So we're going to start off with a basic Spring Pod project that we're going to deploy to Heroku. So I'm going to move this over to my other monitor. And it's, wow, it magically showed up. No, I've got Ubuntu 16 running my virtual machine that we're going to be doing this project in. So I've got my project folder right here. And I'm just opening a terminal so that we can do all these black commands right here on the website. That's not magic. So... We've got Git clone right here. So I've already set up the base project that we're going to be using every time we make a Java API. Go ahead and clone it. And we want to CD into it. So I'm just going to type it out. CD Java base API. So now our terminal is right here. And you can see inside this project, we've got a source folder with our source code. We've got a readme file, a pom.xml file, which is going to manage our libraries, and two Maven scripts. So inside source, we've got the test folder in the main folder. And we've got Java, com, example, my app, it's so long, and demo application.java. Just one file so far. We're going to try to take it really simple in this video. So that is our project so far. And we're going to push it to Heroku just to make sure because Heroku is really cool. You would run these commands if you need to install Heroku, which I do not, so I'm not going to. But if you don't have Heroku, run these commands to install it. And also install Git if you don't have it, which is... I don't know how you got this find the tutorial if you didn't have Git. So we're going to Heroku log in. And I actually don't care right now. So I'm going to actually show my login credentials. My login credentials are this, which isn't a big deal. OK, so we logged into Heroku. Now we want a Heroku create, which just creates the space on Heroku service for our application. It creates the application. You can see that it's created. And we want to add this project to Heroku. So git add, I'm just copying because I don't feel like typing it out. It seems a little bit quicker. I don't know. And obviously, I think you'll be copying and pasting too. So it's good that I do it just to make sure nothing was wrong. So we're going to, we pushed this to Heroku service, this boilerplate code, our initial project. It's pushing right now. It's going to take a little bit. And this just is going to let us see what this demo application does. So you, if you look at the code for it right now, you'll see that it's a basic Spring project. We've got main and what does it do? It runs a Spring application. And we've got one path right now for our API. This is an API project. And if you go to the home root directory, just slash, it'll say hello world from source make. That's what it'll return. Really simple. Again, this is just a base project that we're going to build up from. So make sure you copy it every time. So we're going to Heroku open just to open it because now this project is running on Heroku servers. And cross your fingers. Hello world from source make. Are we going to get it? We got it. We got it. Hello world from source make. Okay. So now we're going to expand the project for our necessary endpoints. As I said, our project is going to have, let's get this back on the screen. We need three functions and add a subtract and a check. And this is going to be for our fruit warehouse. We need a fruit name and a fruit quantity. And I went over this, so I'm assuming you're going to just quickly catch up. If not, I don't know what to tell you. Watch the video. There will be links. So we're going to expand this project. And what we need to do is we need to add functions, Java functions, for each of these endpoints that we want. 
So the endpoint is going to look like, th this is what the URL is going to look like, the base URL. And we're going to say slash re1 because anytime you make an API, you want to have just like the version of it in case you need to change it in the future or add like new stuff. You, you need to have a version number. That's just good practice. And we're going to have slash fruits after the re1 because, you know, it's about fruits. Maybe our warehouse also has employees that we need to manage that we need to have an API for. So it's good to specify what the API does in the path. And finally, a slash add, which is going to, you know, add 50 apples if we need to add 50 apples to our database. So this is the code. I actually just have it set up and we're going to delete this and we're going to add this new code. Oh, no, I pressed a button. Oh, no. Oh, no. That was actually a good resource for seeing how the request mapping works. And we're just going to copy this code and paste it in. So let's go through it really quickly. We've got basically the same stuff from before. This is the same from before. This is the exact same, the root path. But what changed? Actually, you know what changed? This indenting is horrible. I can't believe it. But I, I can't spend time fixing it. So I'm, I'm really sorry about the indenting. I even have a note about it on the website. But that's just the way it goes for the way I, I have these code blocks set up. So the first API path we're going to have is v1 fruits add. And you can see that the request mapping maps the value to v1 fruit add. So we know that this function, which is uh, going to return a string, and the function name is fruits add, is going to map to this particular path, which is really easy. In Node, it's a little bit more complicated, not too much more complicated, but it's more complicated in Node. But for Java, it's really easy. You specify the function you want, you specify the return type, and the request mapping maps the path. And this is a post response because, you know, that's that's what we want. We're posting something. We're adding something to the database. This could actually be put, as I ha say in hindsight, but it's post. So method equals request method dot post. And you can see that our function takes two parameters. The first is fruit name, and it also takes a quantity. Now, again, this is exactly like our Swagger tutorial where, where we've got the add path. It's method is post. It's got two inputs and the output is just success, which actually I don't have set up right now, but we'll do it later, I guess. And we, we, we are just returning a string response right now, just to take it really simple. So the string response is going to be called re1 fruit add new line. And the response is you want to add the quantity fruits. So, so the quantity in the fruits that outputs it and it returns the response. Now, this is really basic and we're not going to go into it in this tutorial because this is more like Java, to be honest with you, a Java tutorial than it is an API tutorial. And I want this to be about the API. So this is really simple. You see, you see what we do. We have the fruits path. We have the method. We can return a string and that's what we're going to be doing. We're just returning a really simple string right now. Now, in the future, we're going to add code to update the database, which is actually what we want the API to really do. But that's, again, semantics. As long as we know how to do this, we can work with it later to add the actual functionality. With that said, we've got the subtract function, which doesn't even have all this fancy stuff. It's just a mapping, it's a post method, and it just returns call fruits subtract that. Next, we've got fruits.check, not that, it's fruits slash check re1, re1 fruits check. So get request, and again, needs code to accept parameters and to query the database to see how many grapes there are in our warehouse right now, how many bananas, stuff like that would be Java code that you would need to write in to return. But just for the example that we're doing right now, we're returning a string that says called re one that fruits. Once you know how to actually test this stuff, which we're doing in this video, then you can actually add the functionality later. And again, main is the exact same. So that's our demo application. That's actually it for this tutorial. We went through all the code, but we need to test it out. So we're testing the code and we are actually going to test the code by make sure you have Maven installed. Again, there's the Java series page. If you don't have Maven installed, it actually takes like a little trick. It's not just pseudo app yet. You need to do a little bit special stuff. So get to this web page, scroll to video A for Maven and go through these instructions, not these instructions. It takes it's a little bit slow because I have like 12 videos on this page. Maybe I should break it up eventually. I don't think I can anymore. But this is the 
stuff you need to do to get Maven working, just make sure you do it so there's no issues. And if it's not working for you, then watch the video to make sure that you know how it works because the video is there to actually walk you through how we actually do it. So we're coming back to this root path and our terminal never changed. So we're going to spring boot run this. And Maven Spring Boot Run is what we're going to do. And this is going to turn our terminal into the server. It's going to use Spring. It's going to boot it. It's going to run it. And it's going to deploy our code as if it's a server. So exactly like if it was on a cloud server on Heroku, just making our terminal the server. And you see this target folder is created. Hopefully, we get no build errors. It compiles, build success. It takes a little bit the first time because it's got to install all the packages. And this is the golden stuff. You can see Spring because works. So I've actually set up all the URLs that you need to test right here on the page. So the first one we're going to test is the, actually, you know what we need? We need Postman. So let's go to Postman. You can test these first two right in your browser. This is going to go to localhost 8080. You can see that our server is running on it. Actually, you can't see it anymore, but it is, it is, it's running on 8080. So you can just do a get request using your browser and hello world from source make doesn't change. You can also do the check in the browser because that's the get command and called re one fruits check, which is exactly what we have the return spring to specify. Now, if you try to do something fancy like subtract, you should get an error, of course, because it's not a get request, it's expecting post, which is why we are about to use Postman to test this out. I've got another tutorial on Postman on the website, so if you don't know what Postman is, Watch this tutorial. So let's just launch Postman. We're launching it. It's going to take a little bit. It's a browser extension for Chrome. Just Google it. You saw what I did. Launch it. And we're going to make a request. Uh, just specify some stuff and post it here. We don't really care. Just an example. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to request th this one. Let's uh, just copy the link address and bring it into Postman. We're going to specify post because it's a post request and we're going to test subtract out. So we're going to send it and the response is called fruit slash subtract. So our post request works too, right? It's really good. And this is our last one. This is the one we spent a lot of time working on. So let's actually do it. So re1 fruits are add function and the fruit name is going to be apple and the quantity is 50. So we're actually specifying these because remember in the code we we had it specified where. Should I scroll up a little? Yeah, let's scroll up a little. So remember in our code, we had a fruit name parameter and a quantity parameter. So we're gonna specify it right here. You know how that works in APIs. And you wanna add 50 apples to the database. It, it works, it works exactly. Now, just as a quick check, what happens if you don't have one of the parameters? Well, you get an error, which is really bad. Now. That is basically the end of the tutorial. This tutorial was just to see how you would test this and how to write the project in Java. We have the mapping down. We have the parameters down. You can just spin this off and see how I do it, change it for what you need to do. But in another video, we'll be making this better. Now, how could we make this better? There's a lot of things that we didn't do and I specified right here. Oh, by the way, feel free to push this to Heroku if you didn't. So I'm gonna press Control C to stop the server right now. And if, if you want to push this to Heroku, go ahead and do that. These are the commands. Might be a good idea. But th there are things we didn't do. And one of them was, what if the user forgets to add the parameter? Like, we didn't just add the quantity like we did. Well, you need to handle errors for that. You also might want to set a default parameter in case the user doesn't, which is something we need to do. You need to handle different response codes. Now, I think we just sent 200 responses by default, but we need to send like maybe 404 if the user gives bad information or something like that. We need to move our functions for another file. So everything's in one file right now, which is really ugly in case we have a big API. We need to make that a little better. And the last thing that we need to do is, even though I don't want to do it, we need to add some functionality like writing to the database, making the API endpoints do what they're supposed to do. So we're going to do that in another blog post. I just wanted to show you how this API works in one nice, concise video. So 
I'm Source Make. That was making APIs using Java. Go ahead and subscribe to see what the next video is going to be when we actually do something cool and actually build all this functionality. You know the base now. Now you need to do some really fancy stuff to make big APIs like all the fancy pro developers do. So I'm Source Make. Thanks for watching.